Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the World Coffee Producers Forum and, of course, the Colombian Coffee Growers Federation, I want to thank everybody who took the time to attend this webinar uh, with, uh, with uh, many of the most important leaders of uh, coffee producing countries uh, association. Uh, the World Coffee Producers Forum, as uh, most of you, of you, I'm sure, know already, was born uh, in 2015-2016 uh, in after several discussions the producers were having in, uh, in first in, in Costa Rica and then we met, uh, we met again uh, in late 2015, then we met uh, in early 2016 in uh, Addis uh, and we had a very interesting meeting with, uh, with uh, all of African producers, uh, some Asian producers uh, and, uh, and uh, Latin American producers. Uh, to discuss the things that we have in common, the issues that we have in common, we have in common, uh, and uh, and how to tackle those issues and how to make sure that that we uh, agree and we find ways to achieve economic sustainability of farmers that is an, uh, 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 a profitable activity in the coffee growing and uh, and uh, in an income, a profitable income for for coffee farmers. The philosophy of the, of the World Coffee Producers Forum is that the whole value chain should act in a cooperative way, in a corresponsible way, in the sense that each link is responsible for the health of the whole chain. It's not enough that some links are positive and the chain as a whole is positive. What we're looking for is that every single link of the chain is positive, uh, starting with the farmers and uh, ending with the retailers. And of course, we all want happy coffee consumers all over the world. So we did, uh, we made the first, uh, the first gathering of the World Coffee Producers Forum in 2017 in Medellin, in July 2017 in Medellin, uh, with a very, very nice attendance uh, uh, above, uh, above 1,500 people, of which 600, uh, more or less, 600 something were from abroad. We had farmers coming, produce, coffee producers coming from all over the world, including Vietnam, including Africa, China, from everywhere in the, in the world. We had them come to, to Medellin. At that, uh, at that forum, uh, we commissioned Professor Jeffrey Sachs and the Columbia Center for Sustainable Investments, uh, CCSI, to make a study on, on, uh, on what was happening in the, in the coffee world and start looking at, uh, at possible ways to, to tackle the challenges uh, for sustainability and especially economic sustainability of coffee growing farmers. The results were presented in the second forum in, in, uh, in Campinas in Brazil. They had a huge attendance as well. Uh, very similar to Colombia, and uh, and it's uh, it's available for all of you. It's public in, at the at the CCSIA webpage. The the third forum, and we will hear about that in uh, in the closing remarks uh, by by uh, the, the uh, NAEB, the, the National Agriculture Export Board from Rwanda. Um, will the third forum will take place in Rwanda in 2021 in Kigali? But we will hear about that, more about that. Uh, at the end. Besides the usual challenges that coffee growers have, uh, the traditional we have on, in terms of, of uh, uh, sustainability in general, social, uh, environmental, and economic, and especially economic, uh, COVID-19 has brought new challenges and new and, and big changes to the, to the coffee producing chain. Uh, not just uh, in, uh, in, uh, in what people in consuming countries can see or what we can see in consuming countries, which is the closing of coffee shops, the closing of, uh, of restaurants, hotels, you know, where is consumption going to go, uh, et cetera. But also there are huge challenges at, uh, at the farm level uh, in producing countries, uh, going from, uh, from how to pick the coffee, how to, how to, have, uh, P to find the, the work, the, the, the people to work in, in coffee picking, how to deal with the, with the milling, uh, with, with all the, this, this infrastructure process, the packing, transporting, the ports, all of that is those, those uh, each step has posed new, uh, has new changes and has posed new challenges to the whole uh, coffee oil chain. And that's what we have brought some of the, of the biggest experts in, uh, in, uh, in producing countries, the leaders of uh, coffee producers, producers associations, so they can tell us what's happening in the regions and all the countries uh, in terms of coffee production, what, what challenges do they see? How they see the future of, uh, of coffee production, especially in terms of what uh, COVID-19 has, uh, has brought upon us 
uh, in terms of, uh, of difficulties and, and the new reality. Uh, a few uh, logistical questions, logistical points. Uh, I want to encourage you to please keep mics and cameras off so, uh, so, uh, so we don't have uh, interfering noises and, uh, and it's easier, easier to, to look at the screen. Um, we have, we're gonna have, when we look at the agenda, um, if we, we can put the agenda here, please. We're gonna have the introduction uh, that I'm making. Once I finish this, we're gonna have, we're gonna have three rounds of polls. Those are questions that we will post to the audience. The only thing you need to do is click the answer you're looking for. In some cases, it's more than one answer. Uh, so you click uh, one or two or three, whatever the question says, uh, just click them. Uh, in a few seconds, we will show you percentage-wise what uh, the answers were. Uh, so 50% said this, 20% said this, 30% said that. Uh, that's the answers are anonymous. So we hope that all of you can please answer the question so we can have an idea of, uh, of what people or people minds are and what, what the concerns are and so on. Um, we, uh, after the introduction, we'll have first round of questions. Then we're going to have three panelists. The, the way they are ordered are uh, in alphabetical order, Africa East, Africa West, Brazil. When Vanusia is finished, I will we will have a second round of questions. Uh, and then we will go back to the to the speakers. We're going to have then uh, Central America, Mexico, and the Caribbean, uh, which is Prome Cafe. We're going to have Colombia with our CEO Roberto Vélez, and then we're, we're going to have Vietnam, Mr. Luong Van Tu, who is the chairman of the Vietnam Coffee Cup Association, Bicofa. When those three speakers finish, we're going to have another round of questions. Uh, it's going to be a longer round, but it's a longer round, but shorter questions. Uh, so, uh, so and once that's that's uh, that's uh, done, uh, we're going to have the closing remarks by by Andre Ndikumama, uh, Ndikumana, who's the acting CEO of Naeb in uh, in uh, in Rwanda. You can during the whole presentation, there's a there's a, a button where you can uh, you can put questions, uh, you can uh, write your questions, and we will direct the question. If you if the question goes to someone specific. Please make sure that you uh, mention to who the question is going, so we can address that person. We can send the question, the question to the person, and at the end they can answer the question. There's no no verbal interacting it would be possible. We have uh, we have around 600 attendees today, which is uh, which is uh, a big number, and uh, and for which again we thank you all of you for for joining us. So at the end we'll have uh, uh, the uh, we'll answer the questions, and uh, then we will be done. A final announcement is we're going to have as uh, as much as uh, the same as we have with the producers on uh, on uh, next Tuesday, uh, May 26, we're going to have an, a second webinar, and that is going to be with leaders of the industry, and that's going to focus on uh, on where they see consumption going in terms of uh, not just not just how much people, but also where uh, the format, you know. The whole try to 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 give us the 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 vision of uh, where they see consumption in the next uh, when 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 things uh, when things when, when water comes down, where is consumption going to be as well? Uh, that uh, that uh, should be again on May 26 today in a week uh, at the same time, and we will circulate an invitation to everybody publicly and uh, and to everybody registered to this webinar. We're going to circulate uh, an invitation uh, for you to join us. Uh, I guess that's that's it for the introduction. Um, so please uh, let's start. I want to if you can look at the agenda, uh, put the agenda, Guido, please. So the first the first speaker is Samuel Kamal, who is you know the, the ED of Africa Fine Coffee Association (AFCA). The second speaker is uh, Anselm Bouton, who is the president of uh, the Agence de Café Robusta d'Afrique et Madagascar, which is ACRA. Uh, then we have Brazil, Vanusha Nogueira, who is the ED of the Brazilian Specialty Coffees Association. Then we go to Prome Cafe, Central America, Mexico, Mexico and the Caribbean, uh, René Leon. Uh, then we have Colombia, Roberto Vélez, the CEO of the National uh, of the Colombian Coffee Growers Federation. And then we have Vietnam again with Mr. Luong Van Tu, the chairman of Abicofa, with the closing remarks of Andrew Nicumana, Nicumana from um, Naira. So thank you very much, and uh, and Samuel, uh, please your ten minutes. Uh, I encourage the speakers to stick to the to the ten uh, your the ten minutes. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Juan Esteban, so let's begin with the first poll. I'm sorry, the first poll go first. Yes. Okay, we have an interesting composition here. Very, very diverse composition. Between producers, mostly producers, roasters, 24%. So the biggest numbers are producers, then roasters, traders, and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, NGOs. Okay, that's the first question. Let's go to the second question, please. This is for you to choose three, uh, three uh, of the of the answers. So the result is out. The short is here. The biggest economic sustainability of farmers is the biggest concern in this group. It's interesting you see the composition that we had. Uh, we had uh, uh, twenty something percent of uh, farmers, but we have a fifty-four percent consider this a big, uh, a big concern for farmers. Uh, increased poverty, potential social unrest in producing countries, uh, and then uh, international international prices are the biggest concern. Consider that this group has. Okay, with this with this question, uh, we will move to we will move to uh, to the first presentation by Samuel Kamau. Uh, uh, Ten minutes. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you very much, uh, Juan Esteban. Uh, it's my pleasure to join you today for this uh, COVID nineteen uh, impact on the African coffee production. My name is Samuel Kamau. I work for the African Fine Coffees Association. I'm the executive director. For information, AFCA has uh, 12 very active chapters and uh, operates uh, in the big producers of uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, among others. And as you are aware, um, the African uh, continent produces about 18 million bags of coffee. 90% of this is uh, from the eastern side of Africa uh, with the significant uh, productions coming from uh, Ethiopia and Uganda. Please bear in mind also that we have a very large proportion of small scale farmers in East Africa. Uh, the last count shown that we are about uh, 7 million small scale farmers in Africa. And so 
the discussions you're having today are quite uh, important to the survival and sustainability of the coffee farmers. At this moment, when the COVID-19 uh, broke out, uh, most of the East African countries were already exporting their coffees, having had uh, uh, a harvest season in Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, and previously to Tanzania. But uh, Rwanda, Burundi, and uh, DRC Congo, and the Ethiopians uh, naturals are still harvesting as we speak. And so we find ourselves across the value chain at different stages in terms of what's happening on the ground. Africa has also been carrying out uh, a survey for all our members out of the 12 countries, full value chain. And uh, we are receiving uh, the results of our survey now as we speak. And the, the presentation I'm going to do today will also draw on some of the key uh, learnings from the uh, survey that we carried out. In terms of uh, product, uh, my presentation, I'll look at each sector and briefly give you uh, an overview of what's happening in the sector. And the first sector is on production, uh, which is our next slide. Overall, we are faced with uh, two big issues. The first issue is that we were already facing low coffee prices. Now, add to that the COVID-19 and we have a double blow to the small scale farmers. It is also very important to note that the issues of climate change and the disruption that is happening uh, previously due to climate change is still ongoing. And uh, overall, the feeling is that the current situation, the COVID-19 added to the low prices, added to the coffee uh, uh, farming difficulties, is making the situation for our farmers quite untenable. It is something that we need to press on the table and discuss with all the value, coffee value chain so that we uh, can act together to move to the next level. As we are aware, most of the African countries have introduced lockdown. Uh, a bigger percentage of our countries are on lockdown now. Uh, then others have uh, curfews and the new term social uh, distancing, distancing is also giving us quite a big problem. It is not business as normal in Africa and uh, I will quickly tell you what the effect of this. The first thing is that uh, with the curfews and the, and the lockdowns, the number of hours that uh, our farmers are spending uh, on the farm are limited. Uh, everybody must be up uh, to get back home in time for the well-enforced uh, curfews. And uh, shorter working hours meaning a lower earning capability for our farmers uh, as um, most of the laborers are paid uh, on volume of coffee picked. Also, we found that the cost of labor has gone up uh, slightly. Uh, some of the areas have gone up with up to 15%. Others uh, from our survey shows a, a, a spike of uh, labor cost all the way to 20%. Basically, as uh, we mitigate uh, on other costs uh, from the industry, for example, the transport costs are high given the social distancing measures where usually we were using trucks and big uh, modes of transportation for farmers. Now you have to carry a maximum number of people on your truck, and this results into higher costs. Uh, it's also very uh, important to note that at the start of the COVID-19, uh, most of the country had not recognized coffee as a social, uh, as an essential uh, sector, meaning that uh, we were lumped up with the non-essential uh, sectors originally. But a lot of lobbying and reaching out to the government uh, enabled coffee to be uh, classified as essential. The beauty of being essential is that uh, you, where you can get passes and approvals to travel up country and to be operational when everybody is crossed is quite, quite important for us. And this is uh, contributing to what we find. On the next side, which is coffee logistic, uh, we happen to be quite well spread out in Africa. And uh, for Eastern Africa, we have three main ports. Whereas the logistics situation has uh, stabilized now, initially we had disruption as we were trying to find out uh, what is happening and where can we go or not go. And as I mentioned earlier, essential commodity classifications allow us to now move coffee. We find that we have slower uh, procedures, uh, clearance at the border points. Uh, essentially, uh, given that most uh, Organizations are working at half the capacity so that we find that uh, when uh, Border Point uh, had maybe, for example, 36 people, 
Now they have 18 people. This is to uh, create a, a big uh, space for people to work. But also, we are now testing at the borders, meaning that uh, where the situation usually takes about two days to three days at the border, this has changed significantly with uh, over two days uh, time taken to clear border points. Uh, uh, as you may be aware, the TAC divers have been found to be one of the big source of COVID-19 carriers. And each country is actually instituting uh, additional measures against uh, this form of transport to ensure that uh, the spread of the COVID-19 is controlled. At the docks, we find that uh, most of the ships are no longer ship, uh, arriving on time. There is delay in shipping, or you have to wait for the next uh, expected uh, ship to come in. Uh, this is uh, occasioned by the general slowdown uh, in economic activity, not only in Africa, but in other countries. And so we have to sort of uh, pile up our shipments uh, at the port of, um, uh, point of uh, exit as we work out uh, on, the, on the shipping lines. As I mentioned, uh, the border are uh, points of uh, COVID-19, but also we are hard hit at the port. Uh, we are not very sure whether the COVID-19 is coming by ships, but uh, we have had uh, the Kenya Ports Authority having a big uh, issue in terms of the infection to its staff members. And this has led to uh, further delays as uh, as the industry finds a way of uh, keeping the, the ports open. The exports, uh, there was a survey has shown a mixed report in terms of uh, exporting and the way export is uh, affected by the situation. Uh, around 60% uh, of the exporters still uh, show that they are able to do business as close to normal as possible. But we have a significant 35% uh, who show, says that the orders have been cancelled um, and they're having difficulties to find in market. So as we go forward, we would like to, to, to explore and ensure that uh, this does not become a big problem as we go forward. Uh, for our coffee auctions, the countries that uh, do auctions are Kenya, Ethiopia and Tanzania. The auctions uh, in Ethiopia are going on quite well and uh, Kenya also has finished its final auction for the season. But we already had uh, requirements uh, on how you're going to operate the auction. And the Kenya had to uh, invest onto an online auction system in response to these regulations. For direct channels, uh, we are aware that uh, the direct communication with most of our exporters is still quite good and happening on time. We are hoping that this situation remains that way so that uh, we can be able to, uh, to work and to export our coffees. Domestic consumption, this is where we have one of the biggest problems. As you are all aware, the first impact, the body blow was on the cafes. As uh, we all know, the restaurants, hotels, and cafes were closed overnight, unexpectedly. Uh, most of our uh, results shows that uh, the cafes were not ready for the closure. And uh, as you know, the Africa domestic consumption was still uh, uh, growing, and now is uh, more or less dead. We are hoping that we can be able to revive the cafe culture when we come back. But also the roasters are also having to find new ways to distribute their coffee. Uh, essentially, most of the roasters were linked to the hotel business and uh, most of the capacity was aimed at the hotel business, not at domestic consumption. And we have to learn very fast uh, how to put the coffees on the shelf. Uh, otherwise, uh, those ones who are not able to do this have had to close business. Uh, the people called baristas are actually literally suffering according to the survey. Uh, most of them are actually um, in a very bad situation. Uh, what can we do? What are the actions that we are recommending as we go forward? The first one is similar to what we are doing, the global collaborations that we need to do, both with the uh, organizations such as the, the ICO, the GCP and ourselves as the World Coffee Producer Forum. It is important we keep doors open and also it's quite good to hear that we'll be discussing uh, with the buyers uh, very soon because that uh, will be what we are recommending as a best practice. The other one is to be able to uh, provide information. It is uh, critical that uh, 
information pertaining to the market, information uh, that allows us to project the future uh, be shared as much as possible. Uh, as I had mentioned, uh, we have activated the country profiles that uh, the two of them are from GCP, that is Ethiopia and Kenya. But also we are creating similar profiles so that we can be able to bring our networking power into the new online way. We recommend the creation of a coffee social fund and the mechanism to do this needs to be worked out. The target group will be the vulnerable groups, uh, people who uh, may not survive the double blow of COVID on top of all the other issues that we've been tackling in the past. Uh, the prices were very low. Uh, in the case of Malawi, for example, they were reporting uh, quite low prices and then COVID came along and the farmers in Malawi are actually having a big uh, problem. We need to find new ways to market coffee. Uh, as you are all aware, we have been doing a lot of conferencing and traveling. Uh, we need to make sure that the relationship that is coffee continues and is also quite good to do. We'll be asking our partners, especially the international partners, uh, probably led by the Global Coffee Platform, to look for co-funding actions or uh, new collective actives, uh, activities that allow us to keep advancing and learning from each other. And uh, we are hoping that working together, we can uh, avoid the market disruption. Uh, already, as I've mentioned, uh, most of the 60% of our exporters report no market uh, disruption, but we are fearful that uh, an extended lockdown in most of the countries uh, would ultimately lead to us uh, feeling the effect uh, down here in the summer uh, place. So our hope is that these discussions can continue and action, uh, call for action could be adopted so that we can agree uh, how best to mitigate uh, whatever is happening in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, now we want to call uh, Sam Bouton the uh, president of uh, ACRA, uh, which is basically uh, by countries of West Africa. Uh, you, you're muted. Uh, Sam, you're, you're muted. You. 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 And Sam, you are muted. Your micro. Your microphone is muted. Your microphone is muted. Turn on the microphone. Seems like he's having some issue with the microphone because I cannot unmute him either. Okay. There he is. Okay now. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to talk with you in Flash, but we can translate in Flash. Is okay? My connection is not very good, but I shall try to talk to you again. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Je suis très heureux, very happy to be part of you. And I would like first to thank you for this initiative. Because you have very, very good ideas so that we can live and we can share the experiences of every country. I'm not going to use the 10 minutes that I given to you because I followed, even if I have connection problems, I followed the intervention of uh, our friend from Africa, but I would like to remind you that we already have shared the same issues through the African Union. So all the country producers countries have tried to see together at the African level how we can find a solution to the situation 
of our coffee producers. So, uh, what Africa has, has has presented has allowed me to be reassured on the same issues because the same issues have been raised and the solution that we are looking for to enable producers to come or to overcome this pandemic so we are sharing the same views with other actors and in political authorities and as you know him very well, he should be the one that will present uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, our presentation, but he is not uh, well, so he's on bed. This is why he's not available to make this presentation concerning Akram, but it's not a problem. But we have almost the same uh, issues just as Africa, just as what has been just presented by Samuel Kamwa. But what have we done in our member countries? What have we done is to see how to support the producers. And we have identified throughout statistics all the producers that have been impacted. And we are looking for a way to fund them to fund them that is to fund them so that they can overcome this very difficult time of COVID-19 awaiting a definitive situation or solution so that we can boost the production of coffee as you know it, in all our countries coffee producers countries we are not able now to bring our products to the port but all our customers have ceased or have stopped importing coffee. And this is why all the producers have in their hand the producers. They are not able to sell them. So we are looking to ways so that we can help all the stakeholders, the producers first to fund them, and also those the exporters, those who export, and also those who manufacture. So all those people, we are thinking about funding them, supporting them by creating a fund, but we do not have a very huge production, but we can store this production, we can store it, and then after the period of the COVID-19 pandemic, we try to export. Now we are going to think together with you to see how we can solve the problem of the prices, the, the drop in prices related to this pandemic. So this is what I can see as far as the situation of uh, Akram member country is concerned. So we, we exchange our views and we discuss on a very frequent basis and we think to work with the producers, uh, the manufacturers, and even the governments, and we discuss almost every day. It's true that, I mean, the prevention measures that have been recommended in Togo do not allow us to meet on a regular basis, but we organize meetings in the regions, on the fields, where people produce and manufacture. So this is what we do, and then share information on a timely, on a frequent basis. And this applies in other countries as Ghana, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, all those member countries discuss on a frequent basis and then share ideas on how to overcome this situation. And as I said with you the beginning, all the problem raised by Samuel Kamu, we share them all. We share them all, sorry, because we have exchanged, we have made proposals to the African Union so that they can support us to overcome this crisis. Thank you very much. I greet you once more for this very, for this good initiative that enables us to share our experiences and to keep on uh, exchanging views. I'm very sorry because you do not have a very good connection and I'm sure you have understood what I see and I remain at your disposal for any further questions. Thank you very much.
and so on. Thank you. Thank you very much for your for your presentation and your interesting view on what's happening in uh, in West Africa right now. Uh, I would like to hear now uh, from Anusia in Brazil. Hello, everyone. I'm Vanusia. Can you put my presentation, Guido? No? This is the first one? Yeah? Yes, that's the first one. No, I think we had another one before, but that's okay. Uh, I am Vanusia, the executive director of DSCA the Brazilian Specialty Coffee Association, and I am the official representative of Brazil in the Coffee Producers Forum, uh, World Coffee Producers Forum. Uh, as you probably know, we are facing here in Brazil uh, a very huge crisis of uh, COVID, of coronavirus, and uh, since March, the, the first cases officially appeared in Brazil in February, and uh, since March, we are uh, taking many quarantines and many kind of procedures to, to manage uh, this process. But uh, starting with the internal consumption, uh, we have the opposite side of uh, Samuel said about Africa. Uh, in March, the Brazilian uh, Coffee Industry Association uh, Say, said to, the, to us that uh, the, the consumption of coffee in Brazil was 35% more than March of last year. They are just concluding the finishing the, the statistics of April, but uh, yesterday they, they said to me that from the previous name numbers that they have for April, we will have 30% more than April of last year. Uh, that this means uh, that consumption here in Brazil uh, is doing well in the supermarkets. Uh, and this means that for the commodity and for the specialty coffees that we are selling at the supermarkets, we are doing very well in the internal consumption. As the other countries, we are with all, almost all the restaurants, coffee shops, and uh, hotels closed uh, in Brazil. And then for these kind of channels, we are having a lot of issues uh, inside of Brazil for the, the consumptions. As you all probably know, Brazil is the second uh, world biggest consumption uh, country and uh, we are very close to to us and uh, one third of our production keeps in brazil and then it's very important to manage this kind of consumption for us too uh, we are trying to do many uh, actions internally to to help and to support the coffee shops the baristas and the micro roasters here in brazil at this moment the government just announced yesterday some economic uh, fundings for them, some supporting, uh, some support for them, and uh, we hope they can uh, transpass this uh, period that we are facing right now and uh, to survive uh, in the second semester, and we will support them for for there. Um, more than the talking about the consumption. I think it's good to talk about the Brazil in general. Uh, let's, uh, next slide, Guido, please. Uh, here we are talking about a guidebook uh, produced by uh, the Brazilian government in April. Uh, they launched this uh, guidebook for the agribusiness here in Brazil. As you know, uh, agriculture, it's the, uh, the agribusiness in general. Uh, it's the major um, economy here in Brazil and the major points that products that we have to export. And then uh, we are uh, having a lot of support from the government uh, to keep uh, the people in the farms, in the field, and to, to get the, the crops and to, to sell the, this crop to the, to the world. 
Um, Brazil, in our days, it's one of the major uh, food suppliers uh, in the world. Coffee, it's considered one food supply, uh, one food to, uh, here for us too. It's one essential product for Brazil too. And uh, we are involved on, on, on all of us on this. Uh, this guidebook, we have many versions here. It's just one of the versions of this guidebook. Uh, but we have uh, many examples about that and many trainings that we are doing uh, from our cops, from our uh, extension uh, companies, from the government, uh, private companies doing these, many lives, many videos. Uh, all the workers, uh, when we, they are going to the farms, they have some exam tests before to go and they have classes how to avoid this, uh, the contact uh, about COVID and uh, we are trying to do the as better as we can. Next slide, please. And here, uh, I, I decided to put this warehouse picture here, one million here in Brazil, to show to you how empty are the warehouses here in Brazil at this moment. As you probably know, we are exactly in between our two crop seasons, okay? We are starting to, to pick our Arabica coffees this month. Uh, some regions, small regions, started in the end of April, but the majority started in this month. And for the Canephora coffee, for the Arabica, uh, for the Canephora coffee, we started in the end of March. Uh, but during this uh, pandemic buying of uh, the world, uh, you probably heard about that and saw about that in the worldwide, many uh, importers and roasters asked uh, more coffee from Brazil from the next uh, crop season. And uh, we sold everything we had. Now we have uh, empty uh, warehouses, very clean it, all the people well prepared, waiting for the new uh, crop in our uh, warehouses here in Brazil. Next guy, uh, Guido. And here we have our total cough production. Uh, this is a forecast for this year that uh, we are estimating CONAB, that it's the, the supplier company from the, the Brazilian government, they are estimating that we will have uh, a crop this year, a coffee crop this year, uh, a little bit um, less than two years ago. Around uh, 60 million uh, bags could be our uh, coffee crop for this, this cycle here in Brazil. It's a lot of co coffee, we know that. And we are having a very, very huge uh, equal uh, maturation of the, the coffees here in Brazil this year, since we have just one flowering period last year. Next, uh, next slide, please. But here we have one Brazilian map. All the colored uh, regions we have here, it's uh, cough production areas. The dark ones are the Canephora coffees, the red ones are Arabica coffees, and the yellow are the areas that we have both Canephora and Arabica coffees. And the circles, the blue circles, are the area that we have the major outbreaks of COVID in Brazil. This map we prepared last Friday. If I prepared this map yesterday, I had others uh, blue circle, uh, circles in other areas in, uh, in Northeast. Uh, this is very complex for us. Um, the majority of these regions, except Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, uh, they are already in lockdown. Uh, we don't have uh, any kind of expectations to have a national lockdown here in Brazil uh, because of the, our federal uh, management and also because we are talking about a continental country. It's impossible to close all the countries, uh, including because we have very different situations and the status 
of the COVID-19 here in Brazil. But one point that it's very important to, to know here is that um, usually we, we have many people, the, the coffee production area contract many people from the northeast of Brazil to, to work in the uh, harvest season in our coffee production areas. Uh, and then usually we have a lot of migration at, at this time of the year. We are doing uh, what we are doing this year. We are trying to avoid this since we have a lot of people uh, available in the coffee areas. Uh, we don't have lockdown, but uh, we have quarantine in many of these are the areas. The isolation, the social isolation, it's stimulating for all the governments, all the state and cities uh, governments. And uh, with this, we have a lot of people available on these areas and we are stimulating the producers. If they need to contract people, uh, they contract people from their town. Uh, on these ways, we can't uh, avoid to bring people from uh, out of the town, uh, maybe with some kind of uh, problems to hospitaling these people and to, to increase the, the risks of uh, contamination. The next slide, please. But this is our crap. Uh, these uh, pictures are from Paraná. We have 5% uh, of the, the production already picked in Paraná, it's in south of Brazil. It's usually the, the, the first state that started to, to pick the Arabica coffee in Brazil. And you can see the, how beautiful the, the, the coffee is uh, from the season here in Brazil. I read asking one question that uh, Vivek sent to me um, about uh, what we are doing to, to manage this uh, beautiful um, crop that we will probably have, that we will have for sure. Uh, well, uh, some of the, um, the points that we have or some of the the organizations that we have and the studies that we have, certs that we have, it's that uh, probably between uh, 35 and 40 percent of the, the coffees from this crop are already sold. Uh, the producers, the Brazilian producers, uh, studied a lot and they learned how to sell their coffees advancedly. And then we have some uh, uh, balance for this moment to, to manage the situation and to ask for the people to have a lot of, uh, to have more patience for negotiating the high quality coffees, the high specialty coffees that they can get from this crop to, to sell this coffee more in the end of the year and uh, have some support from the, the government, from the co-ops and from the associations as the SCA. I'll be here to, to answer other questions uh, if you have. And thank you very much for this opportunity, Juan and FMC. Thank you. Thank you, Vanusia, so much for, for your presentation, very interesting presentation. Uh, I uh, remind you, uh, if you want to ask questions, use the Q&A feature, which is there. At the end, uh, at the, end the, the speakers will answer any questions that you might, might have. Now we're going to have another round of uh, questions, so poll number two. Uh, so let's start with the first question.
these uh, these questions were designed to, based on on questions that we have that we get from producers all the time uh, in uh, in uh, these days in terms of of what to what to expect, what's going on, you know, different issues that they they are concerned about or they or they would like to know more about. Waiting for the result. Guido. Okay, let's see, let's see what, what we have here, wherever there were diverse types of answers. I guess the most, uh, the biggest one is transparency to the value chain, and then value to producers by incre increasing their income would be the second one, followed by add value to consumers, but by a transparency to the value chain, and uh, add value to consumers by guaranteeing him or her part of the price, the price will go to sustainability. I guess those are the, the main answers again. All this information will be will be public. By the way, will be uploaded, uh, so you will be able to see the, the forum online, and everything will be able to be to be seen online uh, uh, in the next couple of days. So let's go. Let's go now to to the other next presenter, uh, Rene Leon, who is the the uh, uh, second question. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Já te falam? Sim. So I guess we have an overwhelming answer by people who believe that uh, that the uh, the commodities future exchanges do not represent the actual physical coffee trade. Uh, okay, let's move uh, move to our next uh, next uh, panelist. Uh, it's uh, Rene Leon, the uh, the executive secretary of Prome Cafe, uh, who we will talk about. Uh, will uh, explain us what's happening in uh, in Central America, the Caribbean, uh, Mexico, and Peru. Thank you, Juan Esteban. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm going to be speaking on behalf of the Prome Cafe region. This involves nine producing countries, all the Central American countries, Mexico, along with uh, Jamaica and Dominican Republic. Altogether, we are producing around 25 million bags. So, as you mentioned, my name is Rene Leon Gomez. I'm the executive secretary to Prome Cafe. And uh, I'm going to share some of the challenges and some of the actions we're taking on the region regarding COVID. So let's move to number one slide, Peter. <clears throat> so uh, all of our countries have, uh, as you can see, have been affected by, by COVID. Some of them have been affected, uh, have been struck very hard. As you can see, uh, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Panama, and Honduras have been the the most affected with uh, high infection rates. This, uh, this started in the urban areas, then uh, it has slowly moved uh, all around the, the countries into uh, rural areas also. Being coffee regions, not so badly, so badly affected, but we have a general close down, lockdown in our countries. Uh, social distancing is being implemented, working from home, and uh, mobility in general has been uh, restricted. It's important to remember we have, uh, in our region, we have recently ended the harvest 
the most important activity being done right now is the export process and the export logistics. So it's the activity being most affected by the restrictions in mobility. Next uh, slide, Tito. So regarding our coffee sector, what are the big concerns? Uh, it's important to remember we're coming from a rust crisis in 2012. Um, we have a, a price crisis still going on. We have had very severe uh, events of climate change, like droughts in the past year. And now we're being hit by COVID, so it's been a big hit to our region. So uh, we'll try to analyze what are the impacts by the different areas of our coffee sector. Regarding producers, there are a lot of concerns. The biggest and the most important concerns are how are our costs going to behave? Is there going to be a decrease in income? There's a big concern regarding the workforce availability. If we get to the uh, harvest season, how are we going to manage workforce? Uh, there's a, a concern amongst producers for the management, giving a ma uh, adequate management to the farm. Regarding market, we are expecting general disturbances, both along from the supply and the demand. We are uh, fearful of a fall in demand. Also, I think it's uh, normal to think there's going to be a, a, a fall in supply. What the balance is, we're not sure. We're not, not sure yet. What are the prices uh, behavior gonna be? That's a big concern in, in, in our countries. Also, can there be a shift in the, in the type of the demand uh, re, uh, concerning uh, people are drinking more at home? Can that shift the type of uh, demand and the quality people are demanding of coffee? Concerning live, livelihoods, livelihoods of producers, uh, we got to remember people have been already very vulnerable. Uh, it worries a lot of decrease in income. The employment opportunities might decrease. That also a big concern in our region. And how that is going to continue impacting on uh, people's living condition. Uh, big concern regarding food safety, health, education, and housing. So uh, concerning institutions, uh, there's a, a, a general uh, agreement we need to increase, and we're increasing right now, uh, assistance to producers, especially to small producers, women, and youth. We are um, using uh, virtual tools, a lot of virtual tools to support producers. Uh, we recognize as institution, coffee institution, it's very important to coordinate along the value chain. So coffee institutions are generating a space of communication all along the value chain. We need, and we are sure we need to keep coffee an ongoing business in our countries. So next night, uh, Guido. What's a general position we have agreed on our region and we have held some meetings in our region of all the countries trying to establish uh, the position and how we feel. So we have made, uh, we, we, we have made it clear that uh, the priority to our region is to maintain health of producers, their families and their workers. Uh, as I mentioned before, especially taking care of women and youth who have been neglected by, 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 our, by our system. Um, we need to work and we are working hard on education, capacity building of producers, especially in these times related to COVID. Uh, we are using a lot of virtual tools. So um, a lot of information is, going, is getting to producers by the phones, by radio, and by different web platforms uh, available. We have a lot of information that has been generated regarding uh, the pandemic, especially uh, designed for producers and the, and the adequate management of their farms and, and their workforce. 
we have been coordinating uh, with the government, especially regarding uh, movement in a region, transportation, making sure input and worker can get to the to their producing units. We have a, a started strong work to uh, guarantee food safety, and we are working hard uh, to make sure exports and all the logistics around export, uh, making sure coffee gets to the, to the port. Uh, it's uh, it's an uh, agreement right now to provide uh, technical assistance to producers. Uh, we are trying uh, and working hard on providing assistance to an adequate management of the farm, maybe not an optimal. Remember, uh, things have not been good regarding income for producers, but the best practices they can do in their farm for an uh, adequate management of the farms in order to keep up with the volume and keep up with the quality of their production. Another uh, item is financing, uh, trying to identify and generate uh, financing opportunities to producers, opportunities that are accessible to, to producers, we are coordinating with development banks, with government, uh, trying to generate and, and provide government funds, and also coordinating with international cooperation who, are, uh, who have uh, expressed their willingness to reor reorient their funds into this pandemic uh, crisis. So another topic, another issue is, uh, we recognize the importance to promote communication and coordination all along the value chain. So uh, all the links of the value chain in our region are trying to work together and coffee institutions are, are trying to promote that uh, work together along the, the value chain. Only together, we're gonna be able to uh, solve uh, the limitations generated by this pandemic. So uh, a, a final message from our region will be, we are expecting bumps and difficulties, but we want to let uh, our clients and our customers in the world know we are putting our best effort to guarantee a reliable coffee uh, source uh, to the next stages of the value chain. So thank you very much, Juan Esteban. Thank you. Thank you, René, uh, uh, for, your, for your presentation. Uh, we're moving now to uh, Roberto Vélez, the CEO of the, uh, of the Colombian Coffee Growers uh, Federation. Thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. It's, it's a sad um, situation not to be able to be together all together and to hug uh, as a friends that we are producing countries. It's also nice to see that through this technology, we are able to gather more than almost 600 people to date. And uh, we will try to address the issues of producing countries uh, facing this COVID-19 crisis. Colombia, a country of 50 million people, has now 16, 16,000 infected and 500 dead. As you see, it's not that a big issue so far in terms of infection, but that is because we've been locked down since March 13. And we, we were told yesterday that we might probably go up until June the 7th. So it will be almost three months of a country locked down. Uh, it has had a huge impact on Colombians' economy, on many people's job. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, hard to find the balance between health and economics. But as far as the countryside is concerned, we have been able to move our goods and services in the countryside. Uh, we producers have been accepted ex an exemption and we've been able so far uh, to move within our areas. But in Colombia, the first challenge that we as the Federation 
had to face was, of course, the safety of our population. We have 540,000 coffee growers in 603 municipalities out of the more than 1,100 in Colombia. So half of the country has coffee in it. And we need to do our utmost to try to prevent and to slow down the spread of this virus. And so far we've been successful, but it's been a painful and a hard lesson to learn. And even more, in a country that is, was just about to start the first semester harvest. As you may know, or you may not know, we have two main harvest seasons. One started in April, and one, the main one, started in, in October. But yet, April was then our main concern, because Colombian coffee, as you may know, is all hand-picked. But it's handpicked not only by the producer, by, but also by a group of people from all over Colombia that gathers in the coffee producing areas when harvest time. These times, this year, due to COVID-19 prohibition, there was no possibility to move people from other places of Colombia into the coffee growing area. So our main concern was how to deal with it. So first one, we worked very hard on a security protocol to try to lay down all the steps that you have to follow in order to try to avoid the contamination of the, uh, uh, on the coffee growing area. That was the first. But then came the economic side. How can we then pick our coffee if people from other regions of Colombia could not come to help us and support us. Well, being all of us locked down, only, remember, only pro food producers were able to move freely, but not other people within the countryside of Colombia. So what we did is that we invited the rest of the population in the coffee, in, in the coffee area to join us, and to help us to pick up the coffee. And that's what we are doing so far. We are trying to move ourselves with, with our own people to try to pick our first half of the year harvest. So far it's going smooth with some issues, some problems, but I would say that so far so good in terms of the way we are picking the coffee. But this, this pandemic has also shown us that we need to gather together, that more than ever, we need to have a unity in Colombia to be able to move and succeed in placing our product outside and to put it on the, in the hands of the consumers. Internal consumption, Vanusha, I have also good news. Yesterday, we, we, heard, we learned the latest survey on coffee consumption in Colombia, on coffee sales in the supermarkets in Colombia. It's a, it's a rise of 24%, which is, which is a very good news, bearing in mind that out, the, the outside uh, home uh, part of the, mar of the market is shut down. So gradually we've been moving forward, price-wise, we have to acknowledge that the international price remains very tall. Market, the, the New York City, between $1 and $1.15 is my, my, my way to put it, is a shameful price. While differentials of all main components of the, of the basket are 20, 30, 40, 50 cents up, the market remains at 110. And we still don't understand how New York City works. So it doesn't surprise me the 80 something percent that we're voting that New York City is not represented the true price for coffee. Price should be in a different range, not 110, unless it is reflecting some other thing that is not coffee, at least it's not the coffee 
that was supposed to be traded in the international market. We have many issues. We still a very vulnerable uh, population, part of the population in Colombia. The government in Colombia, due to this uh, crisis, was or is supporting families who have the lowest income or uh, the, the, the line or they are below the line that they have grown to be able to support. When we try to match the coffee growing population and the people entitled to the government subsidies and support, out of the 540,000 coffee growers, more than 300,000 families, listen, more than 300,000 coffee families are entitled to government subsidies due to the line of support that the, that the government has, has drawn. Meaning that we are still, we have a very vulnerable and poor population that engage in the coffee farming. We need to address these issues. And today more than ever, this World Coffee Producers Forum, when we gather together in Medellin, one of the first, the, the first thing we said is we needed to form a group to be able to communicate among ourselves and with the rest of the chain. So this is the time, of course, probably we will have to discuss prices, but we also have to discuss what are we going to do to maintain and, su and sustain coffee business in the future but it's not only producers, it's also exporters, it's also importers, it's also traders, it's also retailers and coffee shops. We must gather together and we must draw a plan to maintain and sustain coffee consumption around the world. In Colombia, we are doing our best to maintain our industry, healthy first and then working. It's not easy, it won't be easy, but we will do our utmost. And thank you very much for being with us today. Roberto, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, we're going to move now to Mr. Longwan Tu, the chairman of, uh, of ICOFA. A few, a few comments first after his, Mr. Uh, Tu's presentation. We're going to have uh, another final poll. Uh, and then we're gonna have uh, the, uh, the uh, Words from Andre Dikumana from Naeb in Rwanda about the World Coffee Business Forum meeting, the next meeting in, uh, in Kigali in 2021. And then we will jump to the questions that have been posed to the different uh, presenters. The way it's going to work is I'm going to, so everybody's uh, is in the same page, I'm going to read the questions. Uh, I, uh, I want to ask the, the speakers to write them down and uh, we'll start one by one to answer all the questions that he or she had. Uh, address it uh, at him or her. Okay, so Mr. Tu, uh, please uh, go ahead. So in Vietnam we call the good uh, evening, but in our side we call the good morning. So I'm very happy to see everybody look well, uh, especially for the COVID still uh, uh, alive. Uh, for the COVID crisis, in Vietnam, we have about 324 cases, positive cases, and uh, 263 already recovered. And so far, luckily, we have no debt because uh, the government control very well the COVID uh, crisis situation. So, so now, now the market open. From the 30th of, uh, of April, all the coffee shop allowed to open. Uh, they closed about more than one month, nearly two months, but now they already open for the for the business. So uh, everything now depend on the the neighbor country, especially the on Asian country, European country, and uh, and coffee consumption affected by the um, tourists. Because uh, most of the country now still close the door, uh, close the border. So the eating affected for the coffee consumption, not only in Vietnam, but also in the world, because uh, the tourists uh, stay at home. Uh, for the production, 
you know the weather affected to the Vietnam. Vietnam is one of the fifth country in the world affected by the weather change. And uh, that is why for this crop, the, pro the production we activated about only 27.5% uh, of a million back. It means lower than last uh, crop. And the, our, our export so far almost about 16 uh, million back. It means already lower than last, uh, the same time, about 2%. And uh, we estimated uh, the, the next crop also affected by the weather and also by the COVID uh, crisis. So we already served the prior crisis almost three years. But now we have another uh, crisis uh, by the COVID uh, affected. So I think on the coffee industry all over the world, not only in Vietnam, affected a lot by the two crises in the same time. And the uh, next crop, we, on, we already uh, survey. We just have the board meeting of last week and they estimated for the next crop uh, in, 19, in 2000 and 2001, the production will be lower by 20% uh, compared with the last crop. There are three seasons affected by that. First, about the weather change. We have dry and uh, in, the, in the highway, for it, it, it lasts for a long time until now. And the second about the, the income for the um, farmer lower. And the price only lower than the, the running costs. That is why they invest less than uh, for the coffee and also affected by that. And also the many, uh, our coffee plantation are owned more than uh, 25 years. So now we need to uh, replacing another. And also the price low, another crop, the high price. So the people change from the coffee to another crop and also affected by that. And I think uh, according to uh, government statistic, about nearly 100,000 hectares already changed to another crops. They cut the coffee tree and grow another with the high value uh, earning. That is why three seasons affected by for the coffee crop for the next year. And for the, I think for the consumption in the local, so now the, we try to promote the coffee consumption in, in, the, in the local market. Because so far most of our coffee is export to the world market. But now, uh, especially young generation, they like to drink coffee. Our old generation, they like to drink tea. And all the, our coffee product before we export, but now the consumption in local uh, increase year by year. And the whole Vietnam, so far we have about uh, 30,000 coffee shops all over the country. And the tourists coming for Vietnam, very big, uh, very many tourists come to Vietnam. I think um, about uh, more than 10 million tourists come to Vietnam for last year. But this year, the, due to the Price of COVID, I think, will be affected. The tourist income very, in, very, very low. But I don't know when the, when the the whole world market uh, recover, especially for the for the tourists. And uh, for the, and uh, I think for the, and uh, and I think for the farmer. I think the income for the farmer are very low. I already to mention to you, the coffee price lower than uh, running costs, and the farmer become poorer and poorer. I remember last meeting in London. At that time, we talked in the conference, in the ISO, 
when the uh, people say that the coffee is good for health, you drink more coffee, you can live longer. But when the coffee price crisis, the farmer will be uh, the life is shorter because the coffee price too low, and the drinker maybe the can live longer. But now, now the crisis for the COVID, both of the drinker and the farmer also affected by the coffee. Uh, for our government, our association tried to convince to the government. We have a very good connection with the government, and the government have many policy, many measures to support the coffee farmer, especially for the financing. It try to cut the interest uh, rate for the loan and extend the time for them to pay for the for, uh, for the money they borrow. Uh, and that to help the farmer and keep them work in the coffee. Otherwise, they move to another business and the coffee uh, will be sorted of the worker with the farmer. So that, that is very strong, the, the government policy to support the coffee farmer because you know 90% uh, of our coffee uh, holder are very small about two hectare, under two hectare for each uh, holder. And, uh, and the second about the government helped us to, uh, to do promotion for the coffee, especially for the local. Uh, we, uh, we they, the government only did agree for us to uh, celebrate the coffee day and uh, September this year. Uh, I hope at the time the border for the for the whole world will open. So, and, uh, by the way, I would like to invite all of you to come to Vietnam to uh, to celebrate 30 years of our so association. We are already uh, 30 years old. Especially, I think we are still younger than other country especially Brazil and some other country. Our association is younger than, than you are. Uh, but uh, the, we already 30 years um, uh, to celebrate our association anniversary. And also to promote the coffee for the local market. We try to increase the coffee consumption in, in the local market. And that depend on the own market. So, uh, on this occasion, I would like to say thank you for all of you and wish all of you good health, good luck, and hope we work together. I agree with some uh, speaker already mentioned about the how to support the farmer. Because we know for the coffee uh, chain the supply, the farmer, they are the worst, the worst people for the whole chain. Because one kilo of coffee now only less than two dollar for the ro robusta, arabica more than one dollar. But one cup already uh, three or four dollar. So they, 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 the, the, their income is uh, too low compared with the consumer and distributor and roaster. So I agree with all of you. We uh, producer, we work harder. We have a way, thanks to the internet, we can meet each other monthly or quarterly and we find a way to cooperate, to increase the value and increase the price for the coffee and to, to, to support the farmer and keep them work in the coffee farm to support the coffee industry all over the world. Thank you. Mr. Tu, thank you so much for your, for your presentation. Um, now we're going to jump into the poll number three. It's gonna be five short questions. Uh, then we'll go to the presentation of, uh, of Mr. Andre Ndikumana, the, the acting CEO of NAEB. Then we go into the Q&A session 
There are plenty of very interesting questions being addressed and, uh, and the speakers will address them uh, when they finish. And uh, let me remind you that, that next Tuesday on the 26th, at the same time, we're gonna have a similar panel with representatives from the industry. Uh, so Guido, please, the, the first questions of the poll. Okay, now we have the answers. The first, uh, the most important point that you have is pay better prices and premiums to support uh, uh, the economic sustainability of coffee growers, followed by promoting final resources to increase farmers' access to funding and technology. Uh, the, uh, the, I guess those, those are very, very interesting questions, promoting fund resources towards social investment projects to benefit farmer communities. Thank you very much, uh, Guido. Let's put the second question. Again, this will all be <clears throat> available online uh, in the next couple of days. We'll upload everything uh, with, the, with the results of the polls and everything else. When things settle down and we are in the new normal, I'll read this because they're very similar questions from now on. When things settle down and we are in the new normal, December 2021 is our arbitrary guess. Do you believe that, do you believe that consumption will increase, decrease, stay the same, or I don't know? These polls, of course, are indicative more than anything else. Uh, but uh, but since everybody in this uh, in this uh, group and the attendees are people interested and in, 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 uh, knowledgeable about uh, the coffee industry and the coffee sector, I think they are very valid in terms of trying to measure the, what what people are sensing and feeling uh, how the future will look like. Most people think it will increase or will stay the same, uh, which uh, which added the two of them is 80%. That gives up lots of optimism that uh, that uh, that we we can hope for a future once this is this is uh, gone. This crisis, we can hope for a future where we will continue uh, being a player here. When things settle down and we are in the new normal, December 2021, do you believe that production volume will increase, decrease, stay the same? I don't know. Okay, biggest answer will decrease, um, stay the same or increase uh, accounts for about what, 60 percent of people and 34 percent believe it will decrease, six percent claim they don't know. Let's go to the fourth question, Guido, please.
When the current crisis settles down and we are in the new normal December 2021, do you be, believe that coffee production will be concentrated in fewer origins? We're talking about the origins, not the volume this time. Will be concentrated in fewer origins? Will be in more origins? Will have the same number of producing countries? I don't know. Uh, most people believe it's going to be the same number of producing countries. Uh, 57%, 35% believe it will be in fewer origins. 4% believe it will be in more origins. Uh, thank you, Guido. Go to the next. When things settle down and we are in the new normal, December 2021, do you believe that the coffee roasting industry will be more concentrated? Will be less concentrated, will be the same. I don't know. Sixty-five percent believe it will be more concentrated, uh, and uh, twenty percent the same. Twelve percent is going to be less concentrated. So thank you very much, Guido. Those are the, the questions. Uh, let's move ahead to uh, to uh, Andre, please. Uh, uh, your your presentation, your invitation to allow for all of us to attend the the uh, the next uh, World Coffee Business Forum in Kigali in Rwanda. It's going to be five minutes. And then I'm going to read uh, a little, the questions for the panelists to take notes and uh, answer them. Uh, there are very lots of uh, very interesting uh, questions, uh, which of course is, is not surprising. But this is a very knowledgeable group on on, uh, on coffee. So uh, so we move we'll, after Andre. We'll move to the Q and A uh, session. So Andre, thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for thanks everyone for having me and giving me this uh, this time to just to 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 give to the people a closing remark. On behalf of NAEB, um, NAEB is a National Agriculture Export Development Board of Rwanda. We are mandated to uh, to promote and grow agriculture export value chain. Uh, which, which also coffee is part of the prioritized crop for the, for the agri exports. Um, our sphere objective is, um, is uh, increasing production and productivity, be able to maximize the, um, the revenue. Uh, but also um, uh, the second objective is um, uh, to improve and increase uh, markets and uh, value addition. Um, looking and uh, diversifying our produce to the niche market where we can able to maximize high value of the um, high value of the of the of the produce then um, the last way is just to uh, to to coordinate uh, to make sure that um, we have in place the whole uh, enabling environment can able to facilitate investors producers um, uh, exporters buyers and everyone that uh, here and they are affected by um, our agri export. So um, I liked the presentation. I liked the what uh, everyone have um, uh, talked about and what you have emphasized. And in fact, um, what impressed me is the last presentation, the last pool of the question that uh, was there. And uh, most of the uh, 
um, uh, you, you can see that out of the answers, which is multiple choice, there's a last point which is I don't know. And that's, that's really put a big concern to everyone. Um, uh, what if uh, all, all this we are living in as a result of COVID-19, uh, what if um, is going to go within a different direction people are thinking? So what are we going to do? That's, that's a big question. That's bring a question to do, uh, bring a question that um, what can we do today? What can we do tomorrow or after tomorrow, next month, six months, one year ahead? So it's very important then uh, everyone in this sector to come together and come up with a proper solution to make sure that um, uh, we can have a proper solution, uh, not um, saying that we don't know what is, what is really uh, going to happen. So uh, today, um, worldwide coffee is competing with other high value crops uh, where um, the farmers have the choice to, to plant what is, the, what is the high value to him to increase, to increase the income. So therefore there's a need really to start to, to still thinking how can we able to, to maintain the value of the coffee for producers and also work around to make sure that we design and different strategies that uh, today we are facing. And uh, some of those um, strategies involved, um, uh, the economy uh, today is being affected worldwide. Uh, we, are, um, we are in a recession, so which means um, there's a need to start thinking how the farmers and producers can still access the, um, the funding, the capital, at, um, at uh, less than cost to be able to minimize the cost production and uh, keep our produce to, to be more uh, um, uh, competitive. The, alternative crops that they can able to replace with a, with a coffee. Um, there's a need to work uh, hard in terms of uh, keep marketing and promoting to make sure that um, the, generation, the generation still uh, consume the coffee, even, even though um, the way of living now, people are moving from um, a public uh, coffee washing station to being a home-based community. So most of the country worldwide are put a measures in terms of um, restricting the people to move around um, the cities. So meaning there's a need to improve awareness, there's a need to start thinking away. The coffee can still be consumed by the people also being home, uh, specifically for those um, country where we are, we are producer, but when you look, uh, uh, coffee consumption is still, is still very low. So meaning that there's a need really all of us to work together to promote and encourage people uh, with a different age to be able to to consume differently the way we have been, um, we have been com consuming um, coffee. So um, there's also a need to review the distribution and sale model we have been using and eliminate those um, uh, middle disruption that cannot add value to the, to the producers to make sure that um, uh, the producer can able also uh, to, to get the maximum value of the coffee as much as possible and uh, eliminates that so that uh, it doesn't become a challenge. It's to motivate and uh, uh, increase the premium for producer to be able to, to maintain the trees, to be able to, come to, to maintain, to, uh, to do uh, maintenance and um, increase productivity of their trees. I, I, just, I, I still believe that doing that is going to be able to, um, to help um, coffee sector still competitive and uh, our farmers, our producers can continue to work hard to make sure that uh, the coffee is available, available on the market. So um, uh, a lot of our talks, a lot of our talks by um, uh, several people, uh, the way they see what can be done. I still believe that um, uh, collaboration, if I, a collaboration aspect between us is uh, very important to make sure that uh, this sector can sustain. Uh, information sharing is also very critical, uh, best practice on uh, what is happening here and there and how we can learn from that and how we can also stay, stay together to be able to compute is very important also to make sure that um, uh, we don't leave, we don't, um, uh, we don't leave anyone behind. So um, toward the sad coffee producer forum in Kigali next year in July, um, I would like to emphasize that um, we are prepared, uh, we are here to make sure that uh, everyone is welcomed and everyone is going to enjoy uh, being here in Kigali with us. So of course, uh, we, are monitor well, we are monitoring a close with the COVID impacts that um, 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 have stopped people 
uh, movements during these periods. But uh, we are hoping that uh, July next year that have been um, has been um, stopped. Then uh, people can able to move. People can able to come to Kigali to be to be with us in Rwanda. Um, uh, COVID situation is not so bad uh, compared on what is um, what is happening um, um, what is happening uh, um, around the world. So far, we have not um, we have not reported any any diff as of um, as of today, um, and um, and, and uh, we have uh, managed to have the two hundred ninety two cases as of. Um, as of yesterday, and out of 292 cases, um, uh, 197 have recovered. Uh, only uh, 95 cases, which is still active. So that's really uh, shows um, a good progress on how our country are working hard to, to manage the situation. We have had 45 days lockdown period where everyone stayed home. Um, after that, uh, followed by two weeks where uh, they have opened some um, essential services and the people now can able to move with a lim limited time up to 8 p.m. Um, evening. Um, uh, since today also they have launched another two weeks periods uh, where now they have extended to um, 9 instead of 8 p.m. every day where everyone has to be home and also increasing some services. But the good news is that uh, for agriculture is concerned uh, since, the, since the first day of case here in Rwanda and since the first day of lockdown, so agriculture has been, um, has been operating as usual. A uh, uh, farmer um, in, the, in the land are planting, harvesting, and uh, export is, um, is, is ongoing, um, except that coffee was still in harvesting season. So to that, uh, we are seeing that uh, in Rwanda, if we continue to, to follow the major and uh, advice from the government, so uh, hopefully very soon we'll be uh, we'll be living here in Kigali without any case um, of COVID. So hoping that is going to be, is going to be achieved. So to that then uh, it's removed our concern that uh, uh, by July next year that um, uh, the world will come back to the normal situation where people can able to travel, uh, where everyone can do um, as being um, advised by experts. We do believe that this COVID can be, can be um, I mitigated, mean, then people can go back. So to that then, um, uh, I would like to end by uh, inviting everyone uh, to come to Kigali. Uh, it will be uh, good to have you here. It will be good to see you here. And uh, from Naya perspective and the uh, government of Rwanda and everyone being producers, being uh, uh, losters and exporters of, uh, of coffee, uh, we are committed to, to welcome you. We are committed to receive you and we'll give you everything, every care to make sure that uh, you had a good time in Kigali so that next time you can also come back. So I thank you all. Um, that's the end, bye-bye. Thank you, Andre, very much. And uh, I think you have a very powerful message, that message there. Uh, again, this is a World Coffee Producers Forum. It was founded by producers, but the more, the more things move ahead, it has to be a forum where, where cooperation and co-responsibility for the health of the chain is, uh, is the, at the core of, uh, of what we do and what we, how we shape our future. I'm going to read that, to read quickly the questions so everybody, the, the speakers can, can write them down. Uh, I would uh, I want to ask you to take no more than three minutes to answer the questions. Some of them are very similar. Uh, and, uh, and so we can finish more or less on time. Uh, for Ranusia, demand for coffee has soared in recent weeks as consumers stockpile basics in Brazil. Specialty coffee industry might not survive the coronavirus shock in Brazil, as we see many specialty coffee houses closing their doors. What initiatives are being taken for producers so they are not forced to sell their coffee directly into commodity market where prices is very volatile? Second question for Vanusia. What is the explanation for consumption to rise and offset the loss away from home? Is away from home a little part of the market? Uh, this one for Vanusia too. Will the production of washed and semi-washed coffees in Brazil be affected by social distancing measures? Uh, in other words, Brazilian coffee sector is not yet affected by the pandemic, it's not a question. This is a question for Ansan Gouton. Thank you for your presentation. Can you give a specific example of how COVID-19 is affecting, affecting 
some African Robusta coffee at the production level, processing level, commercialization, trading level. Another question for Vanusia. March consumption went up 35%, similar to the US, according to Abic. In the US, this was due to the panic buying, it, panic buying at supermarkets. In the US, this has flattened already. Does Abic have numbers for April? Uh, then we go um, for René and uh, René Leon. Um, you said that uh, you produce 25 million bags in from a cafe countries. Does coffee sector suffer from job loss of their labor of their of job loss in, in is there labor shortage, uh, shortage? Another question for Banusia. Did the barrier measures in Brazil have more impact on the workforce or the working time in the production chain? For Rene again, can you be more specific? What are the programs you have in place to address technical issues? Uh, any, this is a question, uh, general question. Any prediction for the world coffee consumption, increase or decrease? Impact of COVID-19 to the farmer. Will they reduce their, invest in their investment to the farm market? I guess that's a general question. A question to Brazil, Africa, Colombia, panelists. Is there any emergency program for coffee growers activated by their local governments and or supported by any international agency foundation? If so, what's the detail of the programs? And if possible to share by email with everyone in this interesting webinar, thanks in advance in advance for the, for the answer. Question for Mr. Roberto Vélez from Colombia. You mentioned about survival. What is your forecast on bankruptcy risk factor for the producers? Another question for Roberto Vélez. If you are using locals to pick coffee, are they being trained? Are there concerns about improper harvesting due to inexperience? Also, could you provide more info on the latest consumption data? What is the period? A question for uh, Samuel Kamau uh, and Sam Guton. What should, what should we do to make African countries more resilient and able to deal with COVID-19 from health and economic point of view? And what technical assistance should be provided to those that will harvest in the fall? Again, to Roberto Vélez. If the ice does not reflect reality in the coffee market and we agree it is unfair manipulated, what do you recommend? This is a buyer's market and they are very happy. What are your advices? Uh, I guess a general question. What are your advices, advices for the specialty coffee producers? Some of them have high quality coffee, lots available, and demand changes for COVID-19 around the world, and more of them do not have a robust commercial relationship with some roasters. Uh, this is a question for Mr. Tu. Can the chairman of ICOFA confirm that the 2020-2021 crop is expected 20% lower than the previous crop? Do they have a figure in 60 kilo bags? Uh, this is the, the, same, the same question comes again. Uh, then for Mr. Vélez. What can we as baristas do for coffee farmers? Uh, we go... This is a question, I don't know for who, maybe Juan Jose or Gil can explain to me. Does the decline in average monthly production mean that the harvest period will be delayed? Vietnam. For Vietnam, okay. Uh, the impact of COVID-19 at, at our countries vary according to each member state. Uh, this, is, this is the answer? That's the answer for uh, Akram. Akram, okay, okay. So we'll read it, we'll read it when, when one comes. Uh, Vanusia, the uh, final questions. Was the consumption growth feeded by the big companies and producers only, or also had a good effect at the small ones? If we have those details, uh, at the number, uh, let's say the, the question is, if we have those detail, details at the numbers, so we have numbers for that. Current internal coffee prices in local currency terms in many countries are now quite high due to currency devaluation against the dollar 
during the COVID-19 crisis? Do the panelists in countries where the currency have devalued, and in particular in Brazil and Colombia, see any downsides to those devaluations? And when, when will these have an impact on the coffee sector? So I guess, uh, I guess let's start in the same order as we, as we did the presentations. So let's, uh, let's start with, uh, with uh, Samuel. And then the, I, can, I can read the, the, uh, the answers that, uh, some already sent written answers, so I can read the answers for, uh, for some, if that's okay. And then we move to Vanusia and, and down, down there. So, uh, Samuel. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Juan Esteban. Um, a number of questions have been uh, directed towards uh, Africa, and I'll try and tackle the ones that uh, I feel uh, I'm qualified to. First of all, we need to accept that uh, the COVID-19 situation is emerging as we speak now. Every day, things keep changing. It was quite important uh, to hold this uh, web area enough so that we can have uh, what I would call a baseline situation, having, having this meeting as the first one. But I also would be quite happy to see what would be the position as we go more into the year and onwards to December so that we can see what happened over the time. There are some distortions as of now uh, from our point of view in uh, East Africa. The biggest distortion uh, was that uh, there was a panic buying of coffee, but unfortunately most of our coffee has already been committed and sold over. As I have mentioned, the big producers uh, were at their tail end of exporting coffee. But if, yes, we did have some activity where coffee was able to be sold. Uh, also very important to note, Africa has the biggest, uh, I would say the biggest number of small scale farmers, uh, despite not having the biggest amount of coffees exported. The estimation stands at 7 million small scale farmers, depending on where you look at it. But the most important thing is, uh, from my point of view, the following. We need to be able to send a clear signal to the farmers that uh, the coffee industry will rebound after the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, we are watching with uh, uh, horror when uh, we hear that our major markets of Europe and the US are quite uh, affected. So it is important to be reassured that uh, unlike the press reports we're getting that uh, economies are continuing without major disruption and the coffee consumption uh, will still be there. Uh, I would like to point out that even the smallest farmer in Africa Coffee is a business, and therefore there is a constant re-evaluation, uh, both today, tomorrow, and in five years' time, where we will be positioned in terms of coffee as a family that is producing coffee. The best signal has always been uh, the price factor. But uh, as mentioned in this forum, uh, we are dismayed by the shameful price that we always receive. It is good to, to acknowledge that the price uh, determination does not take into consideration the cost of production, which actually of rate has gone up due to our labor intensive nature, uh, climate change mitigation, among other factors. So if we were hoping to, to start making some contribution for resilience of the farmer, it is important uh, to uh, create what I call a coffee social fund. Uh, or find uh, some co-funding action among all the partners in the coffee value chain. Why is this important? To this, the farmer represents the weakest link in the coffee value chain. If we do not create a safety net for him and for his family, uh, there is a very big possibility that uh, most of the farmers may not survive the type of lockdowns we have in Africa, which are total lockdowns. Uh, for those who have not been following international news, at the inception of the, of the lockdowns, the government were quite firm, uh, resulting even in fatalities as they implemented these measures. So we have low numbers because uh, African democracy demands that we respect the rule uh, from the government. And so uh, it is a margin situation. We are not very sure how the, the farmers are coping on the ground. We are virtually online trying to gather as much information as possible. But I could also tell you quite confidently that most of the farmers are beyond the facilities as we speak of. Um, that is, uh, we will not be able to get in touch with them, uh, mostly by uh, virtual 
platforms and such. So we are relying on the people on the ground. But uh, one of the key recommendations uh, as we work as partners is a global collaboration effort where we work together to look at the best practices that are there for the business survival, look at the health and safety uh, mechanisms that have been put in place at the places and learn as fast as possible. So this is something uh, the Collective Action Initiative could uh, help us do that but as also keep active the discussions in uh, the platforms, uh, both at country levels and internationally as we are looking at now. As you are aware, uh, currently we are looking at three levels of action. Uh, first level is actually local actions, uh, community to communicate, community support. Uh, I have seen a lot of um, efforts from our government, uh, from our coffee people to reach out to the vulnerable group. Uh, the exporters especially have created silent and not announcing the support they are giving to the farming community, but it is there. We have looked at uh, the regional actions that are bring, uh, bringing together regionally to be able to ensure that uh, no disruptions are happening to the coffee value chain. But also we want to activate the international level cooperation so that we also uh, identify uh, actions that we can take at this level. As I have mentioned, I think it is important to, to reiterate that the coffee value chain will be as strong as its weakest component. And currently the farmer is the weakest component and therefore special uh, analysis uh, should get all our attention should be given to the farming community as we look forward uh, on to the new future. Also very important, I would uh, want to press to you that uh, in Eastern Africa, the countries of which uh, Africa operates in, there's been no uh, government support to the farmers. It could be happening, uh, it could happen in the future, but as of today, if we are to report today, the governments are more uh, worried about uh, the survival of the bigger community. And so the food distribution where it exists in those countries that is existing, is geared on the day-to-day -to -day -to -day survival of the population. But in terms of pronouncement on farmer support in East Africa, no program has been put in place. We are uh, pushing the position that we need to have uh, concerted government uh, action uh, to ensure that all of us uh, survive together. And we are hoping that uh, as we learn from each other, as we run uh, new lessons at the community level, we'll be able to uh, move to the next step or the new normal uh, smoothly and without much disruption. Do we find uh, coffee, uh, the question was actually, do we expect people to divest from coffee or rather do we expect the change in the distribution of uh, the origins? The answer is categorically yes. As we mentioned, the uh, coffee farmer is a business person. And so there are those who will have to change uh, to the market uh, uh, production. That's production for food crop and for day-to-day uh, -day management. Uh, we are aware that our governments are silently working uh, very hard to ensure food security. And so coffee will be viewed as a second uh, uh, commodity after we have had enough food for the country. Someone if you want to wrap up very soon. Yeah, uh, one, one, round, uh, one final part. In uh, Eastern Africa, our biggest hit was at uh, the restaurant coffee shop. And so these areas uh, were crossed down immediately. And so domestic consumption, which was uh, fragile and quite small, uh, took a body blow, as I mentioned. And so we are expecting that uh, as we go forward, a special actions and support must also come to this uh, group to ensure that they can be able to reopen. As you are aware, these business uh, still have to pay rent and, uh, and uh, all the other costs associated with running their business, but they have been closed for the last three to four months. Those are my comments in reference to the questions that have been asked. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, very much. Uh, I'm going to quickly read the uh, assumption, the, the answers uh, in writing. And I will, I will kindly ask the, the, uh, the speakers to, to uh, take three minutes at the most to answer the questions. We're very, very tight on time and we're going to run over a little, a little more than we expected, but, uh, but that's a good sign uh, for, for everybody. So the answer is the following. The impact of COVID-19 at our, at, our, at our Varice, according to each member state, 
However, we can mention the following. One, this is for uh, West Africa. One, production level, lack of manpower due to curfew and social dis distancing. The situation occurred when we were at the peak of, of the harvest. Two, processing level. The curfew restrictions in the production areas make it difficult for most of farmers to hire labor for the process of their coffee bean. Three, commercialization level. The low price on the stock market at the beginning of the coffee year did not motivate most of farmers to place their goods on the market. This led some exporters to buy expensive bean, the bean. The COVID-19 pandemic outbreak has crippled the major exporters who have their goods stock on, in their warehouses until January of next year. However, our governments are ensured, have ensured the farm uh, gate price for the farmers is guaranteed. Uh, so next, uh, our next speaker, uh, uh, Vanusia, uh, please in three minutes, try to compress everything that was asked to you. Thank you yes, so much. I, <laughs> I, I tried to write one, but I gave up because it was, uh, I was starting the first and then I received the second, the third, the fourth and five edits <laughs> and then I gave up. Well, uh, I think I can uh, summarize this in, in some words. Uh, the first point. Uh, here in Brazil, we have 66% um, uh, of the cough consumption at home and 34% of the consumption out of home, okay? Uh, with this situation that we have now, uh, we have all the people inside of home and in March, we have the panic buying. And then in April, in start of April, in beginning of the April, they continue to increase. Uh, I look at for the people from ABIC right now to understand how is uh, the trends right now. And they said to me that unfortunately the consumption or the buying from the supermarkets and from the e-commerce is starting to decrease. Um, because the, the quarantine here in Brazil, it's uh, going uh, for more time than we, we were uh, expecting. And then they think that it, they will increase a little bit in, uh, in May, the general consumption. We will have a very good consumption uh, at home, but the out home, it will stay, uh, um, the majority of them close it. About the washes, some washes, uh, honeys and pulp naturals, uh, we are uh, addressing the people that has the investments, the structure in their, in their farms uh, for doing the washes and mainly for the pulp naturals that we do a lot in Brazil, that they, they have to use it. Why they, they, they have to use it? Because they already have this investment there, they already have the structure there, the crop, it's very uniform. And when you use yoshit or poop uh, natural process, honey process, the, uh, we need a short period of time to dry the coffees. And then the, the exposure of the workers will be less than for the natural coffees. Uh, um, related to the workforce or time of the, the working, it's exactly the same. We are using a lot of trainings before we start the, the crop season with these new pickers. Uh, we have trainings for them. We give to them many uh, different tools. I got some of my tools here that we are using all the time like this. We do many masks to all of the people to use all time. Uh, each of them has at least two masks for the day and uh, they are working in the, at the same rows as we use it to, to use, or uh, that means we are following the label rows of Brazil uh, as we use it to do in the other uh, years. Thank you. Thank you, Vanusia. Uh, very well kept the three minutes. Uh, René, please. Thank you, Juan Esteban. So the, I had a question about the volume produced in the region. Yes, it's uh, around 25 million bags, 60 kilo bags. It's all Arabica coffee, about 25% of the uh, Arabica consumption in the world. Another question was related if we were feeling like uh, we were afraid of a labor and a job loss, labor shortage and a job loss. Yes. We are worried about both of them. We're mainly thinking about the harvest season. 
So uh, it's important to remember if uh, pickers move from farm to farm, from region to region, even from country to country. So uh, regarding, uh, concerning the restrictions to movement and the, all the pandemic effects, uh, there, we can have a lot, uh, an impact uh, on, on labor shortage, people not getting to the farms, and also people not having a, a, a job. Um, another question was uh, regarding a, a most specific answer to technical issues that are being attended. Uh, it's important to you to know that it, the region, coffee institutes in the region have tried to select the most impactful practices to coffee production, also cost effective. Uh, for example, uh, fertilizing based on uh, soil and plant analysis, uh, soil management to make nutrients available, uh, use local input, uh, things you can find on the farm, uh, trying to find value to coffee so products. Uh, also, regarding food safety, uh, there's a, 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 an agreement to plant other crops that can provide food for producers. So yes, technical issues and health issues are being attended using virtual tool. Thank you, Juan Esteban. Thank you. Thank you, Rene, very much for your answers. Uh, Roberto, please. Está mute. You're mute. Uh, your mic is muted. You. Yeah, now? Okay. I was asked for a question. First, um, regarding the risk of bankruptcy from the growers, that's always there. Unfortunately, that's an everyday uh, risk that we want to run, we have to run. Um, something that uh, probably the, the, the coffee world does not acknowledge. Uh, the wheat producers are at risk. And as Samuel said, we are the weakest link of the chain. But remember, we are the only one that are indispensable. The rest of the chain can be somehow rearranged. So that's, that's number one. Number two, ask me whether they, we, have, we have trained local people to pick coffee. Pick coffee is not uh, rocket science. It's uh, relatively easy. It's uh, something that you learn by doing it. Uh, after a couple of days or three days, you are uh, almost an expert. Number three, asking if ice is not a good reference, then what? Good question. I wish I had the answer. The only thing that we've been telling the world is that we should take into account the cost of production of each country plus some reward for the business. And that should be the minimum price paid for the coffee grower in the world. And uh, number four, uh, Barista said that uh, how can he or she help producing countries or producers? Number one, keep educating consumers about the good quality of coffees. That's number one. And number two, remember, you sell your coffees at $3. And out of that, a coffee producer gets two cents. Thank you, Roberto, very much. Uh, I'm going to give the word to, to Mr. Tu. Yeah, they, they were answered, but, uh, but you sent them in writing. Do you prefer me to read them or you want to answer them? Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the crop in Vietnam normally uh, started uh, start, uh, from uh, November. So I think this uh, year will be no change, not affected by uh, COVID. So the the crop, the, the next crop will be start will be start in uh, November. And the second about the production, we estimated about uh, reduced by about four to five uh, million back because uh, uh, by three season. First about the weather and dry season. And the second amount, the, 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 the low income from the farmer saying they invest a lot of money to look after the coffee tree. And the third about the, uh, the third about the, the, 
the coffee tree, uh, the old coffee tree, still about more than uh, 100,000 hectares. If the quality is good, but the, the production is low. And the second about the price of coffee already three years lower than the, the people uh, move to go another uh, tree. You get the high, uh, the high income. For example, the Hukano and the durian and the some other other tree. So that is why we, it affected the coffee production, especially for the export and we the local consumption uh, will be high, and uh, that is why the coffee um, uh, coffee uh, green bean export will be less and less year by year. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Tu. I have one, one, uh, one final, one final uh, comment here uh, that came from uh, from uh, from uh, Tom, um, uh, but recently about uh, complementing his answer. Uh, this is from Akram to strengthen African resilience. One cooperation within to the question about uh, about uh, strength African resilience. There co one cooperation within regional organization. Akron, Africa, etc., and between these different organizations must be strengthened to establish concerted instruments to support vulnerable small producers. And three, seeing beyond coffee to take into account the issue of food security is a matter of survival. Thank you very much, uh, Ansan, for your, for your answers. Uh, this brings us to, to an end. I want to thank everybody who attended this meeting and, and who joined us. Uh, the, uh, we want to uh, invite you, make you two invitations. One is the very short term to join us next week uh, with representative of the industry. Uh, it's going to be Tuesday, May 26 at 8 a.m. Eastern time, so say New York time. And, uh, and your time, same time uh, as, uh, as uh, this, uh, this meeting. And the second meeting is, uh, is a second invitation for you to join us uh, to join the World Coffee Producers Forum in Kigali in 2021, my last trip to uh, before the lockdown and this whole crisis uh, was uh, to Kigali, where I met with, uh, with the representatives of the, of the Rwandan government and the, uh, the coffee institutions and, and business people. Uh, and they could not be more committed. They're looking forward to make this a very, very, very successful meeting, have people from all over the world and have not just, uh, not just Rwanda, not just the producers from all over the world, but also very specially Africans from East and West, all those who produce coffee, uh, host us uh, in the World Coffee Producers Forum. So thank you very much. And I hope to see all of you in a week at the same time. I will circulate the invitation and the, and the links and everything else. Thank you so much and have a great day. Stay safe. <laughs>